Hey there, and welcome back to another Miraculous Ladybug Season 5 review. And today we're going to be talking about Episode 19, Pretension. Yeah, Episode 19. Gloob, back at it again. At first, earlier in the season, it did get me shaking my head in frustration, but now, you just have to have a good laugh at it. Gloob is like an addict at this point, always chasing their next hit. Hey, psst, you got any of those Miraculous Episodes? But yeah, with all that being said, Let's jump into the episode. So we start off following Kagami and Adrian as they're working their way through their extremely micromanaged schedules, and God, glad my parents weren't like this when I was their age. It honestly gets me exhausted simply watching these fictional animated characters living lives this busy. Like, how can you possibly go on? They're micromanaged to the most minute of details. Ugh. Anyway, turns out Marinette's finally unveiled to Adrian just how odd and obsessive she can be, having already figured out, down to the second, how long they have to spend together before he has to go home after his fencing class. She also considers being a bit of a weirdo and wearing a disguise just in case Adrian's dad's going to be there to pick him up. As despite him being a better parent these days, he still doesn't approve of Marinette. But of course, Adrian and Gorilla simply decide to not say that Marinette was there. And honestly, Gorilla is so based. I love that dude. He's the papa that Adrian needs. Also, I like that Adrian and Marinette have seemingly already arrived at the point in any relationship where you can reveal just how weird you are without any sense of shame. Classic. Anyway, Adrian and Kagami make their way into their class, whilst Felix, in full hero costume and in broad daylight, not very incognito at all, spies on them from the rooftop. Honestly, always gotta love a Felix episode. These got me pretty hyped right from the get-go. They're filled with good plot. And all the while, our villains are doing villain things. In an effort to try and heal Gabe, or at least buy him more time, Natalie and Gabe have built a new machine to siphon the energy of the Kwamis to reverse Gabe's injury from the Cataclysm. And I gotta ask, how the hell is he building all these crazy machines in the span of, what, a couple of days, weeks? Recently, I'm pretty certain the show made it clear it's been like nine months since they started school and Ladybug and Cat Noir made their debut. They would place that episode, which I think is the one where Marinette and Adrian give up their Kwamis briefly and still no part two. So this means that the majority of season 5 you'd assume is set in June. So Gabe gets cataclysmed, he builds the machine and rings for the Kwame to give his villains more powers, and now he's done this. How rich is Gabe? How smart is Gabe? How's he doing this stuff? Is the dude just sitting on a massive vault of gold or something? But yeah, the machine blows up, cause, you know, of course it would. Dude has put it together in a handful of days as a desperate attempt to stave off disintegrating. Finally, some realism in the show. But in the end, it just makes Gabe more determined to get the Miraculouses, which he's failed to get no matter how hard he tries for months and months. But surely, this time he'll defeat the naughty teenagers, right? And then Kagami's mum joins the chat and calls Gabe's attempt to avoid leaving Adrian as an orphan with nobody to care for him a sentimental trifle. Woo-hoo, yeah. Staying alive is all well and good, Gabe. But what about continuing to try to force our teenage children to fall in love with each other? Surely that's more important. Anyway, she lists Felix and Marinette as the major obstacles to the pair bringing about their vision of the future, and then just goes on to blame Gabe for everything. <laughs> Jesus, with friends like this, who needs enemies? And then they decide that first up, they're going to go after Felix and the Peacock Miraculous, but that's for later. As first, it's back to the school for Marinette to speak to Adrian before he has to go back home. And here, she decides she's going to take the fight to Gabe, because historically, when one of Adrian's friends comes stomping into Gabe's house to tell him he's a shit dad, it always goes down so well. But maybe this time is going to be different, right, Marinette? Anyway, after Adrian tries to apologise for not standing up to his dad for her, Marinette proves herself the most supportive girlfriend on the planet, brushing off Adrian's seeming lack of spine and telling him it's not his fault, that she needs to be one to deal with this. I'm not sure if it's really a healthy relationship dynamic for her to do all the heavy lifting here, but, you know, still, it's a pretty big Chad move for Marinette right now. Now that they've sort of stripped away a lot of those stalker vibes, she's 1000% more wholesome. And I'm all here for it, like, seriously. In one breath, she's outright praising Gabe for changing his ways and becoming a better father, whilst not even being all that bitter that he doesn't approve of her. And then she just decides she's going to win him over. Seriously, this kid's just the best at the moment. So deeply wholesome. Will it last? Who knows? But it's still nice to see. She even rationalises all of this to be her fault, saying that he's being rightfully defensive of his son, as she was a bit of a super fan and a bit creepy, as Kagami agrees with. And then they all just smile and don't really acknowledge just how creepy she actually was. 
Although it was quite funny for Kagami to just straight up tell her she hasn't really changed all that much. She's still a little bit over the top. Did give me a good giggle. Kagami just has no shits left to give. Her mum then arrives and Kagami decides that she too is going to give her mum the talk. You know, the classic, stop trying to set me up with your friend's son talk. Gorilla then arrives to pick up Adrian, who laments that four minutes went by so fast. But, of course, if you were actually watching the scene the whole time, there were no time cuts. So that means it's only been like, what, two minutes? Either that or time is running faster in Miraculous Land. <laughs> oh well. So they both hop in the back seat, and Gorilla looks like he knows this is going to end in tears. And so off they go to confront Gabe, who seems to have been eagerly anticipating this, and brings them into the kitchen, before immediately banishing Adrian to his bedroom like a little boy, so he can try to intimidate Marinette. Or so I thought. Turns out he really has somewhat changed, as instead of going for the brute force method like he used to, he tries the carrot and the stick approach. He invites her in for snacks, makes Marinette a pancake, he then tells Adrian to leave, and Marinette looks all hopeful that Adrian's about to stand up for himself, but... He kind of hangs her out to dry by just walking off on her, but whoops. Either way, it's very awkward. But anyway, back to the pancakes. Marinette tries to explain everything to Gabe whilst he cooks, and Adrian seems to be suffering from some mind control upstairs, unable to make himself go back to help Marinette, but also unable to let it lie. And so he just stands at his door, all tense and on edge. Phew, poor dude. Gabe, meanwhile, explains everything to Marinette. He tells her her life's like a pancake. He can make it any way she wants. After all, only Gabe has access to all of the best toppings. The sky's the limit with Gabe, but the pancake is just for her. She can't share it with Adrian, so he's pretty much bribing her to leave him. Name your price. He then goes on to move the analogy from pancakes to fashion, and tells her that when it comes to what's fashionable, all you have is the illusion of choice, because ultimately, what's fashionable is decided by the designers, and the brands, i.e. Gabe, and not by people like Marinette. Of course, Marinette fundamentally disagrees with him, and so he finishes by telling her to break up and have everything, or don't and lose it all anyway. But she wouldn't be the hero if she gives in, and so she leaves, but before that, she gives Adrian a hug and tells him she ain't leaving him for nothing, tells Gabe his pancakes are utter trash and that he's an outdated fossil, intimidates Gorilla, and just looks like a bit of a badass, really. You know, just a day in the life of Marinette. Of course, she then has a mild panic attack after she leaves, because, you know, why wouldn't you? But she came out of this scene looking pretty good. Meanwhile, apparently Kagami and her mum have been driving around Paris this entire time, and like seriously, Adrian's been home for ages. And it's not like traffic in the world of Miraculous is ever really that bad outside of like one episode, but yeah. Kagami's telling her mum to stop pushing her towards Adrian, but her mum, who apparently needs a consent workshop, much like the boys in Marinette's class, decides, <laughs> nah kid, tough luck, you're getting married. I'd never thought I'd see the day when Gabe is the slightly less awful character, but here we are. However, Felix, who's become a creepy stalking simp, decides that now is the best moment to intervene. After catching a ride on their sunroof, he cuts it open and straight up abducts Kagami, which in turn gives her mum time to contact Gabe to akumatize her to go after them and recover his miraculous. And so she's akumatized into a variant on her old form that looks pretty damn awesome whilst also giving her the power of the rooster, which she uses to give her super smell. And she also gets the horse, the mouse, and the bee, so, so she's pretty overpowered already. Plus, she's less blinded by rage, as this is all part of their plan, so surely she's going to be thinking more rationally. Regardless, using her new super smell, she starts to follow after Felix and Kagami, who are holed up on the Eiffel Tower, where Felix has made a truly terrible attempt at wooing her. He pretty much just makes her feel like he's a bit of a creep. And yeah, he is a bit creepy, honestly, but at the same time, it was also kind of cute. And I'm not surprised they're seemingly going the romance route with these two characters. It just kind of feels right, you know? I also found it very funny that the writers included what would be a far more realistic interpretation of what you do when you find out your friend's been stalking you. Unlike in the main storyline, where they all just laugh and think Marinette's quirky, Kagami is very weirded out by Felix, and is fully ready to just straight up give him the chair. Because yeah... Admitting that you've been spying on somebody and following them around, all because you have a crush on them, is a pretty weird-ass thing to do. Huh, who'd have thought? But then, all of her boundaries seemingly begin to crumble, as he mentions that he wants to protect her from her mum, who's getting more and more controlling and abusive as we work our way through the season. And yeah, she pretty quickly gets those puppy dog eyes, like, no Kagami, the dude is a weirdo. Don't let your guard down just yet. Meanwhile, Marinette's having a crisis as she realised that she yelled at Gabe, which, yeah, I too would be panicking if I had yelled at a billionaire. Before she notices the villain just running past her, and so off she goes to try and save the day, and the same with Adrian. 
who sees one of the doubles jumping past his window and follows it. We then get a little montage of the villains trying to find Felix to no avail as he's detransformed and thus they can't track him by a smell. I guess the magic of the miraculous protects him? I don't know. But regardless, since they already had something of Felix in the first place, they can use that to track him instead in his base form. And so they do. And they make their way to the Eiffel Tower, only for Ladybug and Cat Noir to jump in and save them, giving Felix time to transform and take Agami away again. This leaves two doubles to chase them down with Ladybug in pursuit, whilst two stay behind to fight Cat Noir, who's beaten up pretty quickly, when they bring down a piece of the Eiffel Tower down on top of him, forcing him to flee into the sewers. <sighs> when in doubt, go into the sewers! That's the true moral of this entire story. And the whole show in general, really. Anyway, Kagami's mum chases him into the sewers, tracking him with his staff, only for her to lose him when he detransforms and hides in a... utility room, I guess? And all the while, Ladybug gets slapped around as she tries to stop her two villains from chasing down Felix and Kagami, who, whilst all this is going on, manage to hoodwink the villain and escape by splitting up his fan, throwing one piece away, chucking another down a chimney, and attaching another to a pigeon to throw her off the scent. Now honestly, aside from his social ineptitude, it is so fun to see a character that's just so utterly competent at everything he does. Felix is the best. Of course, they then for some reason decide to go into the sewers, which is where the climax of the episode is going to take place. Because of course it is. What's better than stinky sewerage? But before that, we have a pretty interesting scene where Felix talks about how creating senti monsters, forcing them to obey you and then killing them, is completely and utterly wrong. And instead he thinks that if you make one, you need to love them and cherish them help them find their purpose. And that if you deprive them of that, it pretty much makes you evil. And then he pretty much lifts the lid on the whole senti theory completely and reveals that he and Kagami are the same. Wonder what that could mean. The villains then turn up and the heroes turn up and then they all get tied up and the Akuma gets cleansed. You know how it goes, pretty quick and straightforward. But all the while, Felix escapes by diving into the sewerage, right in there. Woo hoo, hope you brought a nose plug, mate. Back in their car, after Gabe mocks Kagami's mum for not having full control over her, she demands back their family ring, which is obviously going to be used to give her orders, and Kagami gives it back, only for Felix in the post credit scene to reveal that he'd swiped the real one, promising not to let anybody control her ever again. And honestly, Chad Felix moment right here. He continues to be the most based of all the characters. And so they finish off their little mini arc holding hands. Hell yeah, I'm shipping it. And meanwhile, Kagami's mum is making a late charge to challenge Gabe for the worst parent in the show, but I digress. Back at home, Gabe tells Adrian that Marinette is actually a really nice girl. Ooh, some of that reverse psychology, huh? And so he hopes he carries fond memories of her when he moves to London. <laughs> oh, Gabe ain't playing anymore. Hell, he's such a troll as well. So cruel. Look at the face after he crushes his son's heart. He doesn't even care, what a dick. But hey, at least Natalie's hitting him with the death stare afterwards. So we can see that at least somebody cares about Adrian's feelings these days. And so, here is where the episode ends. And it was actually a good one. Cool plot developments, cool action sequences. The season's going really well so far. I mean, shame about the episode order, but at least the quality itself has somewhat improved, eh? We'll see if it lasts. And so, with all that being said, that's the end of the video. And I would like to say that these have just been my opinions, and now I'd like to hear yours. What did you think of the episode? You like it? Hate it? I'm curious for your thoughts, so make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and let me know.